Hi everyone. In this video, we'll take a look at how you can start and stop EC2 instances using AWS Lambda. The motivation behind this approach in this video is primarily to enable an environment where you can manage cost more efficiently. So for example, if you're not running your EC2 instances 24-7, uh, it makes sense to shut it down, be it for your development environment, your production environment, or even your personal learning environment. Uh, it's just wasteful uh, keeping an, all these EC2 instances running when nobody's accessing it. Uh, so this is how we can achieve that uh, using some of the components within AWS. Now, in, in the real world, I would imagine, uh, as uh, with most projects, uh, you don't necessarily want to shut down all the EC2 nodes. Uh, say, for example, you, wanna, you might be very selective around which nodes in a project you want to shut down, or in most cases, it's just a question of only shutting down EC2 instances of certain projects and not all the projects in a given EC2 environment. Now, uh, so we'll take a look at that in a bit. Um, one of the capabilities we'll be looking at is uh, AWS CloudWatch. Uh, the reason we are using CloudWatch is Lambda itself does not have a native capability to schedule uh, executions, uh, which is why we leverage CloudWatch. CloudWatch allows us to create rules, and these rules can be triggered based off of a schedule uh, using cron expression. So if you know how to uh, set up cron expressions, uh, it's pretty much the same. So we can schedule it so that it runs Monday to Friday during working hours. Now, given that the AWS Lambda function will need permissions to EC2 uh, to perform the start and the shutdown or the stop, uh, we will be utilizing IAM policies. And then finally, um, the code itself has been written uh, using Python. So much of our time we'll look at the Lambda function, uh, which has been written in Python and within Python using the Boto3 library. And within the Boto3 library, we'll access EC2 resources capabilities. And uh, once we have access to the individual instance objects, we can then call its start and stop functionality. So that's the overview of the video. Let's dive in. All right, so the first let's take a look at the EC2 instances we will be working with. Um, so here you can see that we've got uh, three EC2 instances. And as I've mentioned earlier, uh, what we would like to do is only uh, start and stop the instances uh, for a given project uh, and not all the three. Uh, so in our case, um, what we will be using is uh, we will leverage the tagging and the metadata capabilities of these instances. So you can see that we have three instances off of which uh, demo one, if I click on that, you'll notice that we have tagged it uh, with the key of project and the value of demo and even demo two has uh, the value demo. So both tagged with demo, whereas this particular instance is tagged with foo. Uh, so what we will do is uh, use Lambda to only retrieve instances which have uh, a tag of project equating to uh, demo and only start and stop those instances. And that's uh, the mechanism I'm using uh, to, um, to uh, segregate, if you will, uh, instances belonging to multiple multiple projects. Uh, it's just one of the most common approach. Uh, you might choose something very different. Um, the other common option seen is to actually use the instance IDs, but uh, that requires quite a lot of coding or hard coding rather, whereas in our case using metadata like uh, with these tags, uh, even if you have one server or 10 servers uh, of EC2 instances, it'll work marvelous. Uh, so that's on the EC2. Uh, let's look at uh, the Lambda function. Um, so here I have a Lambda function written in Python. Uh, so I've just collapsed the designer view. Uh, we'll take a look at the code and spend more time on the code. But just before we do that, uh, just highlight, uh, remember we talked about the policies um, that uh, the Lambda function needs to have. Um, so here I'm creating uh, a new role and in that role, um, what I've done is um, here's the role and uh, within that role attached a, a policy um, and for purposes of the demo I've given it uh, the policy to uh, EC2 full access uh, which uh, is actually a really um, poor way of doing it. It um, gives too much privileges but uh, to keep this video simple just uh, try and um, mimic the same. You want to attach a policy, click on attach policy, search for EC2 full and uh, that uh, should give us more privileges than we actually need, uh, which is okay for the time being. And then finally, let's actually look at the code itself. 
Um, so in the code, um, I'll expand this function. Let me actually expand the view first. So here we have uh, the actual Lambda handler um, and a couple of utility functions. So let me expand the Lambda function. Uh, so here you can see that we are uh, based on certain inputs or parameters that we pass to the Lambda. It would either uh, call the internal functions either to start the EC2 instance or to stop the EC2 instance and these two functions internally use uh, this utility function. So a um, couple of different ways that uh, we can skin this. Um, so obviously in my case I have one lambda function that's being used for both stopping and starting. I, in your case you might prefer to have two separate lambda functions. It's purely uh, a call that you can make based on your individual preferences or project requirements. Um, so then let's talk about how we can make this more dynamic instead of hard coding everything so that it's reusable um, and parameterized. Uh, so a couple of ways that we can pass uh, parameters into Lambda. So option number one is uh, we can use environment variables. So uh, here you can see uh, the region and the project is uh, or, or our parameters I'm um, being I'm passing into the Lambda function using environment variables. Um, so that's uh, one of the options that uh, we can leverage. And the other option uh, is to actually pass it as a parameter to uh, the Lambda handler itself. So in the event we can uh, pass values. So in my case I'm using both. Um, you might just choose one or the other or both like how I've done. Uh, use both environment variables as well as uh, pass it as a parameter to the Lambda handler. Uh, so in the Lambda handler I have uh, two uh, things obviously that we can do if the value or the action value is start uh, and or if it stop it calls the corresponding function. Both these two parameters are set um, from uh, in my case I'm setting it in the AWS CloudWatch rule which we'll take a look at next and finally when I let me expand so uh, these two functions so you can see both the start and the stop um, are uh, pretty much uh, doing similar functions except that obviously in case of stop we are calling the stop functionality in case of start um, very obvious that we are calling the start uh, internally all of these rely on the Boto library uh, here you can see that um, the Boto library um, uh, we are leveraging it quite significantly um, and both these two functions uh, we are calling another helper function uh, to give us a list of EC2 instance which takes the region, the project, you may remember the, the tag and finally the state. So uh, in case of um, um, when we want to start EC2 instances, we will be calling this uh, utility function with the state of stop. So obviously we only want to start instances that are currently stopped. And um, we, we use uh, Boto to retrieve the list of EC2 instances for a given region. And then we can actually get a list of EC2 instances by passing a filter. And in the filter, we'll be setting the project tag and the state. So again, if it's uh, if we want to start instances, we would look for only instances that are stopped and then started, and vice versa. So this utility function returns a list of um, instances based on the parameters that have been passed. So essentially, it acts as a filter. Um, and then again, in the start, um, uh, we loop through all the instances that we have retrieved, and then we. Um, we start that instance and uh, handy to uh, keep tabs of how many instances uh, uh, we have changed the state. Um, so again, I'll let you glance through the code. Uh, um, if you want to pause the video and just quickly glance through the code uh, in case I'm going through fast. Uh, so that's our uh, EC2 instance of uh, helper function to get a list of all instances. And here you can see that this is the start and this is the stop functionality and then finally the event handler itself. And then finally uh, let's take a look at uh, the CloudWatch event uh, or the CloudWatch rule. Uh, so if you go to CloudWatch under events um, you can create rules. I've already got two rules created in advance so we have two rules that's the start and the stop. So let's take a look at start and let's edit that. So here you can see that um, this is um, um, how I've scheduled it. So in my case, or the default uh, would have been to base it off of an event and instead we can do it based on a schedule. And here you can specify the cron expression. 
Now, uh, the cron expression here is uh, the minute, the hour, and we are specifying that it's, uh, it's to be run Monday through Friday. So that's when it's going to start the, um, uh, uh, the lambda function or trigger the lambda function, which we can specify here. So uh, from these very many options, you can select lambda function um, and then um, select your lambda function. And here, in my case, I've specified the option. Oops, I've uh, closed that. Let me open that again. All right, so here I've specified the lambda function and uh, here um, I'm specifying the action. If you remember, this is the action parameter that uh, we are using uh, from within the lambda handler. So you can uh, specify a start or a stop. So I, if you remember, I have uh, two of uh, these um, rules. So one for start and one for stop. So obviously in case of start, I'm sending uh, these parameters in, specifically the action being start. And finally, um, again, this is quite handy uh, if you want to enable or disable it. Uh, so in some cases, some days, uh, maybe you want an exception, uh, an ad hoc exception. Uh, so this is quite handy to either enable or disable um, uh, that particular rule. Uh, so similarly, I have, um, uh, just like we have start, we have stop as well. And in case of stop, um, we obviously only need to change the schedule. Uh, so every day at six o'clock, for example, I want to change that. An important thing to keep in mind is that all these are based off of uh, uh, UTC time frame. So um, again, it's, um, it's uh, quite handy to know um, what the time difference is between the region that you're working with um, and the UTC time frame. So for example, if you are based um, in the East Coast and you want to uh, shut down your cluster or start your cluster at 8 a.m. in the morning, um, uh, Eastern time, it's actually uh, 12 p.m. in UTC. Um, so again, keep that in mind uh, when you're specifying um, uh, the cron expression. So all this is in UTC time frame. And uh, with that said, uh, that should wire everything up and um, that's basically sums up what we need to do. Um, so. Uh, um, as an example, um, uh, since all of these clusters are being stopped, um, let's go back here. So here you can see that these clusters are all running um, and I'm gonna cheat right now. So instead of um, these, the CloudWatch event, let's go ahead and modify. So let's go and modify the stop event. Um, so right now, if I look at it, we are at 12.19, so I'm gonna give it a bit of time. 12.19, uh, 12.20, if I put it, 12.20, yeah, 12.20. Um, configure details and update the rule. And one of the things we can do is uh, then click on the metric and see if uh, any of it has been invoked. This was uh, much earlier in the day. Uh, you can ignore that. Uh, so let's just wait till it uh, triggers it off again. Okay, so now we can see that uh, we have an event that was uh, triggered. Um, so we have a stop um, rule that was triggered and you can see uh, from the chart there. And now if we go to the EC2 um, list and refresh, we can see these nodes have been stopped. So again, I'm, go I'm gonna stop with the demo on this. Uh, so obviously the start is just the opposite uh, and I'm assuming um, uh, seeing the stop in action gives you an idea of how we can trigger the start as well. Um, so that's it for this video. Um, hope it was helpful. Thanks everyone for watching.